So I'm going to cover this game called Yeah, what he said. We'll call it Kenichi PS2 for short, because as far as I know, it's the only Kenichi game on the system, the only one based strictly on the Kenichi series, and one of only two games that the character's in. Kenichi PS2 was developed by AT and published by Capcom, and released on the PS2 in 2007. I have to mention right off the bat that I don't know a lot about Kenichi, or of other Perfy martial arts series for that matter. I don't have anything against them, but the whole genre kind of passed me by. While other people were watching stuff like Kenichi or Sekirei, I studied the Blade. This game caught my eye because of some similarities I see between it and the Rival School series, mainly into model work and combo system. After playing Dragon Quest VII on a 3DS for a month, it's really refreshing to see character models with features molded onto them instead of ones with faces that are pressed onto a blocky model. Kenichi PS2 is a relatively simple game. It's still working with traditional fighter inputs and focuses on combos, but the character's move lists are homogenized, and it doesn't allow for as many crazy situations in a fight as 18's other games. You might assume that's because it's a licensed fighting game for an anime series and is trying to be as accessible as possible, but there's more to it than that, and it's due to how the game handles movement and attack inputs. The default layout has most of the basic attacks on the face buttons of the DualShock 2 controller, which I'll get into later. There are some hit command moves that can be performed by pressing an attack button in a direction, but most attacks are either part of an attack chain or a special move. Most attack chains are around 3 or 4 hits, with either a light or heavy ender, and at least one of them can launch opponents. This is common amongst the cast. The game has a gimmick attached to the attack chains. There's a point in most chains, usually around the third hit, where the chain can be cancelled into a special or super attack. This is often the only way to properly cancel normal attacks into special or super moves. It's surprisingly restrictive, especially for an 18 game. Most of their fighting games let players cancel everything into everything else, and this is an obvious ceiling on Kenichi PS2's combo system. Another, more subtle restriction lies in movement. The game is set in 3D so players can walk forward, backwards, and to the left and right of their opponents by using the D-pad, but there's no diagonal movement. Holding forward on a D-pad goes into a run, holding backwards causes characters to walk backwards, and holding up or down causes them to walk around other characters. Tapping directions on the D-pad performs a step. Tapping up and down leads to a side step that can dodge some moves, while tapping forwards or backwards dashes in their respective directions. And if you tap forwards after backdashing, the character runs without any startup animation. Tapping backwards after a run causes the character to stop in place. The thing about all this is that there's no buffer to separate movement inputs from attack inputs, and that means that sometimes, trying to input a motion for a special or super move will often be interpreted by the game as an attempt to step in a direction, and the input is wasted. This puts an unusual emphasis on the inputs themselves, which can be distracting, and often forces players to tighten up their neutral inputs or buffering in ways that slow the game down. I haven't seen much discussion about this part of the game, so I tested this on a few other PS2s with other controllers, and it seems to be something that exists rather than something I'm just making up to excuse my poor play and execution. So yeah, you heard it here first folks, the movement in this game is a pain in the butt. There's also no manual jumping. Only specific attacks can be used to jump, and they're mostly for movement and startup purposes since the game has no high-low system to begin with. There's no manual blocking either. It's all done with neutral blocks, but holding a direction cancels your blocks. There's nothing inherently wrong with a fighting game that doesn't let players jump or block on command, but it obviously clamps down on combo possibilities and spacing in general. I think this was Aiting's way of preventing the game from turning into a mess right off the bat. At this point, they probably knew what systems in their games lent themselves to long combos, and those were usually related to jumping attacks, free cancels, and sloppy inputs. So they reined in all of that stuff for this game. This makes Kenichi PS2 a very interesting game to me because it's the closest thing to a tight fighting game that Aiting's ever made. Combos are stricter than anything they've made before or after this game. Whether that makes the game worthwhile is up to you, but it makes the game a novelty to me, at least. As far as the rest of the combat goes, the other mechanics apparently stick closely to the source material. The main attack buttons are the light and strong attacks, or shock skills. There's a very strong attack map to X that causes stagger, called Truth Skill, but it's slow enough to be stopped by faster moves. It can be performed at any time, but if the player has at least one stock of meter, it will take that stock automatically and becomes a guard-breaking move as well. 
There's also a counter button, or the return skill. Now this is all jargon from the series, but it's important to note this stuff because the game follows a soft triangle system. Shocks beat truths, truths beat returns, and returns beat shocks. When one type of attack beats out the other, it causes a counter hit and a stagger. There are even different colors for each kind of counter. When characters hit the ground, they bounce for about a second afterwards, which opens them up for further hits. And I can't find any limits on OTGs aside from the timing. Some stages have environmental hazards that inflict breaks on characters that are knocked into them, and they're essentially stuns. These are meterless ways to extend combos, and they work fairly well with the inputs that I mentioned earlier, because they don't really require a lot of movement to take advantage of them. For the former, you're usually using chains to follow up, and for the latter, you can just walk over and attack from neutral inputs anyway. Special and super moves are naturally taken from the series as well, and most of them use either quarter circle motions or double quarter circle motions. Super moves take two bars of meter, and they usually beat out any regular or special moves on startup. There's another gimmick related to the super meter here, based on this game's style system, which is also lifted from the series. There are essentially two grooves. The first is silence, and the second is called motion. Both grooves are activated with a specific button when players have filled their super meter, and these grooves have different abilities when used. Silence allows players to cancel their guard into a special move, and passively restores a character's life bar for the duration of the power-up, but removes the ability to use super moves. Motion increases attack power, adds chip damage to normal attacks, and allows players to super cancel. Most characters also have one move that changes based on whether the player has selected one or the other. It's hard to generalize this part of the setup, but I guess the silence moves usually slap people around for positioning, while the motion moves are straightforward and explosive, doing a bit more damage. I'm not sure the variable moves are really justified, since they don't add a lot, and they could have just been folded into the regular move list with other common motions, but I suppose the developers wanted to make the groove seem more useful. All these other mechanics are really satisfying to use, and most of them give the game some genuine depth, not like game review depth, where it's like, oh, I can't understand it, I'd better just say it's deep so that I don't have to explain myself to angry fans. But they don't add the heft necessary for the game to stand out, and the aforementioned input issues really hamstring this game. If Capcom had released a follow-up to this game that just changed those inputs somehow, I think it would be stronger for it. But that didn't happen, and Kenichi PS2 remains the closest thing to a not-busted game Aging has ever made. It's about as good a game with a triangle system can be, which is... Uh... Hey, at least the music and models are good. <laughs>